Hello everyone, today I'm taking a quick look at the game Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy. If you have ever previously played the browser game Quop, you will already be familiar with Bennett Foddy's work. In Getting Over It, you are a man trying to climb a mountain. Your lower body is stuck in a cauldron, or perhaps your lower body is the cauldron. The game is fairly light on the lore and character development, uh, i.e. non-existent. And all you have is a hammer and apparently supernatural endurance and pretty impressive strength. Getting Over It is a frustrating game. It is the sort of game that is designed to be frustrating. Your only control is with the mouse, or trackpad, or whatever have you, which directly controls the head of the hammer. If you look, you can see the circle which stays reasonably close to the head of the hammer, or rather the head of the hammer is following where my mouse is moving. If I stretch, if I move the mouse over to the left, then the hammerhead follows it. I can also bring it back in, keep moving it to the right and stretch it out that way. I can move it in an arc. And I can also carefully position it below myself. When the hammerhead hits an obstacle or any other object, then it stops and you end up having to move in relation to it, <clears throat> like so. Like Quop, it's a game where your objective is to do something that in any other game would have been programmed in a fairly straightforward manner, probably using keys to move left, right, and jump. Um, and in, whereas in Quop you were controlling a man and trying to get him to run by using individual keys to control his thighs and calves. And in this game, you only move the mouse. You use it to swing your hammer, reposition it, put it underneath you to help launch yourself, and that's it. There's, there's nothing really else to say about it. So I'm going to go ahead and see this also isn't the first time I've played it. But this is basically the start of the game. I have been here many times because the game is fairly punishing. There are no checkpoints. You cannot save the game part way and then decide if you fall to load from your save point. It will at least save your progress if you decide you want to stop and then come back later. But there is no undoing a mistake. The main part of the game is trying to learn the momentum and trying to learn the control of this hammer. At first, it's very easy to just move the mouse in sort of fairly random big arcing swings. That's the sort of most obvious way to move, and is probably the way that you'll be moving most of the time. But you'll find very soon that you need to be a little bit more careful with your timing, because if the hammer hits something, then it can be very easy to just shove yourself in the wrong direction. Or if it finds purchase on a rock that you hadn't meant to connect to, you might find yourself flying off and losing all of your progress. There are certain areas where it is a little more difficult to fall all the way back down than others, but it is also still quite possible to just fall back to the bottom all the way if you are fairly unlucky with where you fall from. That is possibly the quickest I have ever managed to get through that passage. And now I have to be very careful because the tree there, um, as many people, including myself, learn to their chagrin, is that it is not actually a physical object. It is purely in the background and trying to use it as leverage will only lead to tears. So that might be the quickest that I've ever made it through that first area. So now as you can see there's a fairly wide 
flat area here, so you'd need to screw up pretty badly to end up falling all the way to the bottom here, but it is possible. So what is the appeal of this game? I'm not really sure, but I'm the type of person that just can't help but play stupid games, especially when I've been told that they're difficult. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm necessarily any good at them, I am just like that, I guess. This game is for people who are determined or masochistic, or determinedly masochistic. <clears throat> But I have to say, it gets very satisfying when you feel like you've learned how to control these things. You go from an initial case where you're randomly flailing the mouse and seemingly just going nowhere all the time, to getting a slightly more subtle touch and being able to understand that you need to drag the mouse down more in order to ascend because otherwise you end up just sending yourself flying away from walls and such. You realize that there are moments where sometimes you need to move quick, sometimes there are times where you can't control it and you just have to throw yourself and then be ready to catch yourself. So something that hasn't come up and that I actually forgot to mention is that the developer will also occasionally um, sprinkle commentary throughout the game. Sometimes that's his own observations and musings. Um, Occasionally he will, well actually pretty often, he will just quote random people. Whether you find that interesting, or just smugly pretentious, or infuriating, um, I don't know, that's probably up to you. It can get pretty annoying because most of the triggers for these... Um, voice segments to come in are usually after you've fallen. While it seems like they are meant to be encouraging, after you've just lost all of your progress from the past hour, it can be it can be pretty annoying, which is possibly also the point. Careful. Oh. This is actually my best run so far, I think. Probably jinx myself, but we'll see. I have gotten a little further than this. I think I can balance there. Nope. Okay. Oh no, that's it. There we go. There he is with the quotes. Fortunately this was a fairly good place to have fallen. There is, as you can see here, a gap where if you fall all the way it, you can find yourself right back to the starting area. You will manage to fall between everything. So the more you play, the more you develop a kind of vocabulary for the game. Whether that's from hearing other people speak, or just your own internal names for things. You start realizing that you've got your big swings, and you've got your pogo jumps or launches. You've also got these moments where you need to carefully pull yourself in. And just carefully maneuver. He 
Here we go, one more try. Uh oh. It's an arm. <clears throat> the main thing is also managing your panic, I th think. It's very easy to just start flailing around when you would actually have been perfectly safe-ish and then send yourself flying away from the safe... God damn it. This isn't quite the bottom, but it's pretty close. Anyway, this game um, will be available on Steam or DRM free from the Humble Store on December 6th, but is available now on the in the Humble Trove if you currently have a Humble monthly subscription. Try it. Or don't. Try it if you hate yourself. <laughs> or uh, just after a challenge. Anyway, that's it for me, and I'll see you next time.